Welcome to the show, Morgan Stewart. How you doing? Great. How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm super excited that you're here. Um, in researching you this morning, it is uh, it, it's pretty damn impressive what you've been able to accomplish. National champion, um, all I mean, Pac-10 champion, all all world, like all world. Let me say this right: all world series team, and then you were a Philippine Philippines Philippines national team player. Mm -hmm. That's wild. <laughs> it was fun. It's a, it's, it sounds like a lot I've done in my playing career, but sure. it's, um, college softball and then, you know, the national stage of softball. Yeah, absolutely. But it's just so like it, the list goes on. Cause I only, I only, I just looked and I said, let me just grab a handful of these. There's probably six to seven more noteworthy <laughs> things in there. What of your accomplishments, what's your favorite accomplishment? My favorite accomplishment in sports is probably that national championship, just because I got to do it with some of my best friends. Um, it was just the highest of high. Actually, my memory is terrible, yeah. but I can remember every pitch of that last at bat right before like I threw my glove in the air and like celebrating with my friends. It was my favorite thing. How many, uh, that's a, that's incredible. What is a playoff series in college? Because I'm not completely versed in college softball. What does mm -hmm. the what does the bracket look like? Okay, so college softball, you have your regionals. It's like a three week process. Yeah. You got regionals, you got super regionals, and then you've got the World Series. World Series, you've got eight teams. Um, everybody gets seeded according to how you finished in in the postseason brackets, and then. Um, I guess it's a week-long tournament. Yeah. So we played Florida in the championship series. So that's a three-game series. So yeah. You got to win best of three. Yeah. Okay. And I always, I always love baseball and softball for the best of series and basketball too. I was never a big fan of like football. One win, win or win or you're gone. I was like, damn, this. What about the team that works so hard all year? <laughs> yeah, it's cool. And um, NCAA they change like the structure sometimes. So. Gosh, I can't remember when it switched to a three-game series, but probably a few years before I got to college, it used to be that one one and done. And um, so, yeah, I, I definitely prefer the series part. No, absolutely. So, your favorite memory of your favorite memory accomplishment, your favorite accomplishment is the national championship in college. I would say that just because it wasn't just me doing it. Yeah. It was me being a part of something bigger than me. Yeah. Uh, and it's probably taken me a long time and I'm still working on just being it's me, Morgan Stewart, the solo entrepreneur, yeah. like business owner. But um, yeah, that's my favorite. What's harder, sports or business? Man, that's a really good question. <laughs> I think business is harder just because you've got like really having to balance real life stuff, like adult stuff. Yeah. And like, and that's just my experience now. Okay, how much time do I devote in business when we know what's going to get us to be successful? Right. More time, more energy, more uh, thought space right. into your business, but you have to balance your family. You're yeah. like, how you want to live. Yeah. Is it like safe to say that they're equally hard? One is more of like a adolescence hard and one is like a real life hard? I think so. Uh, definitely in now I've got a lot more life skills yeah. that would have helped me immensely <laughs> as an athlete yeah. in sport. So if I, knew, if I knew how to balance, if I knew how to have patience, if I knew... Uh, how to have perspective as a kid growing up in sport. Like, yeah. I think all of us that used to play sports when we were younger are just like, man, I wish I could go back and play with this brain right. and this mindset. Right. But since I feel like that's a common thought with both entrepreneurs and athletes, like, okay, I learned so much. I want to go back and like change all that. But let me ask you this because you you're always a champion. You're, you're a champion now. You're a champion then. You're a national champion champion in college. What do you think makes a champion? What makes a national championship softball player? And that's a loaded question if you want me mm -hmm. to get more specific, but I'm open to keeping it broad and just hearing what you say, what you have to say. Yeah, I was actually on the phone with one of my friends, Danielle Laurie, who pitched in that game, and she's probably the most recognized Washington player in the history of the school. Yeah. Um, this was yesterday, and we both are very much a fan of just this phrase that we all say is winners win. 
Winners win. Yeah. Like you find a way. So I think that a really key aspect of being a winner, being a champion is figuring it out. You figure out how you're going to be the best, whether that's uh, how we communicate as a team, building a team culture, and that culture is based on the idea of we're not going to complain. We're not going to find excuses. Um, there's a lot of things that we're not going to do in yeah. order to get to be our very best. 100%. Do you think there's something different about anybody who does something great? Do you think there's something different about the upbringing, the brain, the... Um, I'll let you kind of a little bit into my, like, I feel like my hardheadedness and my stubbornness is kind of serves me in the, in the fact that I'm like in business mm -hmm. and that I know that that comes from my mom was amazing. I love my mom, but she was a very over protective mom. And because of that, I, I no one tells me what to do. I make my own path. Mm -hmm. So, and that served me really well in business and, and I have to kind of balance that out in my personal life. But, um, do you think there's something like that with you that, that you just like are fired and fueled by something that was you were born into? Um, there's a lot of things, like a lot of, a lot of thoughts come to mind. Yeah. Um, the first one that I was thinking as you're speaking was just, we're not average, yeah. right? There's, there's kind of like an ick when it comes to being the oh average. Gosh, yeah. And I think everybody that I've really connected with in business or in sport or just that idea of like, you know that this person's elite in the world that they are coming from. And the reason why they are is because they refuse to stop at good enough. Right. Yeah, like good enough is just like, okay, really? Like gross? Right. <laughs> it's, it might not necessarily be, I have to be the best, yeah. but it's, I want to kick ass at this. Yeah. I, I want to do really, really well or else there's no point in doing it. Oh my God, thank you. Exactly. That's yeah. the takeaway right there. I don't want to do this unless I can do it better than everyone else. Right. And it, it, like, I, I think about golf, yeah, right? Like, yeah. or I think about any hobby, which is why hobbies were really hard for me to get into until uh, a certain point in my life. I'm like, oh, I, this could be fun for yeah, me. Right. Yeah. So golf was one of those things where, okay, I'm going, I'm going to go golf. Let's get these random clubs that aren't that expensive. In my mind, I'm like, well, if I'm going to devote hours and hours 100%. to doing this, 100%. I'm going to get the best clubs I've Right. You can't get right. Um, I'm going to practice. I'm going to get a coach. I'm gonna <laughs> right. And uh, some, some people would say that's a block to having fun and like being able to like be in the moment, be present and like, I know what you're going to say, <laughs> you know, but in reality, it's like, it's not fun for me unless I can compete. And hey, like winning I'm, is fun. Winning is really, that, I would say fun. that's probably the thing that like separates most business owners from mm -hmm. like, um, like em employees maybe, not that there's a good or bad way, but I think like that I have to win, like I must win, I must be competitive. I think that, and I think it comes from somewhere, but I think that's the thing that like, that's the separator. And just back really quickly, it's in our core values as a company, as good isn't, good isn't enough, excellent is essential. Mm. So to your point, like no, good is not enough. Like for us, excellent is essential. Um, so I completely echo you there. And I want to go back to one thing because I didn't ask it when you said it, but I think it's really interesting. And 99.9% .9 of people won't get to experience this. On the field, mm -hmm. right before you win the national championship, and you said your memory is a little hazy, but you remember you're throwing your glove up in the air. Can you remember exactly what you felt the pitch before? You're like, holy shit, we're about to be national champions. Yeah. Um, so I knew Danielle was going to strike this girl out. You, oh, wait, okay? oh, I, <laughs> I, just, I just knew it. Like... Yeah. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite teammates to play behind, absolutely, just because she worked her butt off. Yeah. Like you just, you just have that feeling. Yeah. Right before the last pitch, I remember looking around at the infield because the entire season, like there's ups and downs, there's ebbs and flows, different people play different roles at different times. Yeah. But I remember. Think, like looking at each person and just going, I am so lucky to be around these type of people. And like, that's, I think the reason why I hold that memory in such high regard, because yeah. that's kind of what I look for in my life is yeah. to be surrounded by people that I'm like really proud to be associated with, Absolutely. that I respect, Absolutely. that um, bring me to a higher level. At the time I was a sophomore in college and I just remember like, that was the best series I've ever played in my entire life yeah. because I played free because I was so trusting and like I 
not that I depended on them to pick me up, but I was just like, oh, if I don't get it done, they're going to get it 100%. done. A hundred percent. There's so, like a trust factor that everyone's yeah. going to do their job. So that was my memory is just going, holy, like, holy crap. One, we're going to win. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do with my glove? What, what do I do in this situation? And it's like, okay, refocus, refocus, refocus. Like we're still not there. But then looking around and just going, this is really cool. That is, and having that realization, I, like I feel lucky that I had that perspective at that time because I'll remember it forever. Absolutely, that's incredible. Like, and I say that because most, I'm saying just most people won't win anything at that level. Ninety nine point nine percent of people won't win anything at that level. So I think it's a really like interesting insight. Like, what were you feeling? And that's really cool that you just. I'm grateful for everyone here. How great we made each other. We're about to win. Okay, blah, yeah, celebrate. It was nuts. Super cool. <laughs> um, speaking of gloves, glove flying in the air, you have your own glove line with mm -hmm. Easton, which is a massive flex. What does one have to do to have their own glove line? Um. <laughs> and just for like viewers reference, if you go on Easton's website and you go to gloves, your face, like they are marketing it as you. It's not like, it's like, men's gloves, women's gloves. And then it's like over here on the side, it's like the Morgan Stewart line glove. And it's like, whoa. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, I'm, I'm very, very proud of it. And it's different because a lot of times uh, you're gonna see, you know, Alex Bregman's glove, all of these professional players. Right. And again, going back, I yeah. didn't play professional. I'm not a current pro player. Right. So the reason why I think Easton put their faith in me was because of my influence on the youth and yeah. like trying to uh, be a role model for, for these kids. And women's sports, in my opinion, are a little bit different than men's sports. A lot of these girls might not have their biggest aspiration, aspirational goal be professional softball. Right. Like all these girls want to play on TV on college, in college softball, yeah. um, but it's very different on the boys' side. These boys are like, oh, I want to be the next shortstop in like the MLB, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's a little bit different. Are you, f uh, are you feeling, I heard it, but I'm just making sure I heard it right. Do you feel like there's a lack of, maybe a lack of role models? For the girls uh, on the pro, on the pro side or on the even the collegiate side, or is it more just like a mindset thing when the when when these young women start the sport, it's a different mentality. Um, I don't think there's a lack of role, role models. I think softball is being restructured definitely, yeah. and there's so much more visibility with professional women's sports now. It's amazing. Um, people are doing a really really good job on the professional softball Got side, it. especially AU softball. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of growth happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think at the time that I signed with Easton, this was years ago, yeah. um, the pro league wasn't what it was now. And so in terms of why Easton went with me, it was like, oh, we know that these girls at the youth level are looking at, for lack of better words, influencers like a Morgan Stewart, right. who is posting drills, posting life lessons, Absolutely. like has my thing, like my message dialed in, yep. whereas yep. the professional leagues didn't right. have that as much dialed in. Right, because you have been um, coaching the youth athletes, youth athletes for 10 years at mm -hmm. least, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that. Not to mention you've used your your platforms to grow and, and get your message out there. So there's two things that I'm hearing you say. It's having a solid following, but also just being in the, like you're, you're able to have a direct, um, you're able to have a direct positive impact on these youth athletes directly because you're working with them as opposed to playing and being viewed, right? Yeah, I think I've just been consistent. Like, and that's uh, one of my core values really is consistency and like actually showing up uh, in the same way over and over. Okay, I'm gonna be this force that's hopefully a positive influence yeah. that's equipping these young women with uh, mechanical skills, life skills, mentality like yeah. just different ways to get her better absolutely um you said a lot of things there that were amazing to a two-part question how do you feel that social media you've used social media to build your brand because uh, it sounds like easton kind of came as by way of you being great on the field and then after you being great off the field mm -hmm. and then using your social media so sounds like the e part of the easton deal was just having a solid brand that you've built, mm -hmm. but what else has having a, a solid social media following done for you or building that following done for you? I think 
building the following or understanding what a brand is and what it can do for me or the people that I'm trying to speak to, it's really made me be laser focused in what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Even though like when we talk life lessons, there's so many things, so many directions we can go. Yeah. But if I, if I know my mission as, uh, I guess, an influencer in the softball space. We're yeah. just going to say that that's sure. what I am. That's fine. Yeah. Um, my and mission. That, and that's what you are though. Yeah, you it, are an influencer in the softball space. But the word is just so cliche at this yeah, point, uh, right? What do we, I mean, can we just together find a new word? Like a <laughs> educator, like a, I mean, I just, a role, I'll just say role model in the softball space. Role model. I mean, I love being a coach, like coach I, in the softball space. coach in the softball space. What about like a nationally recognized coach in softball? You can say Boom, that. Boom, baby. <laughs> That's it right there. So Perfect. as being a nationally recognized coach in softball. My mission is to equip softball players and families yep. with all the information I have to the point that they don't need me anymore. So oh, like that's my point, I guess, in writing and posting the things that I do isn't to have them depend on me forever. It's that they... Ha, like have their own experiences. Right. I share my experiences so that these kids can ultimately be better than I was absolutely. when I played. Yeah, absolutely. There is a, gosh, who said it? Alex Ramosi was talking about, he. this was like maybe six months ago to a year ago that he went on this, you know, he goes on like tangents, not yes. tangents, but he has like a thought and then he runs with the thought for a while. And he was like, he's like, oh man, I'm going to be bigger than Gary Vee. And then he was like, of course I'm going to be bigger than Gary Vee because Gary Vee didn't have himself to help him. Yeah. And I was like, it's exactly like that. Like being that, being in a position to help people get further than you, like is your mission right now. Mm -hmm. And that's what really makes a good coach, influencer, whatever you want to call it. Um, really cool. So this is like a perfect time to kind of move into the next thing. What is Defense Club? Defense Club is now my platform where everything that I use to equip my athletes lives. Um, it's where I'm sending every single person, whether they can work with me in person in Anaheim, California, or they can't. And uh, it's my pretty much step-by-step -step place where I'm teaching physical mechanics of in field and softball, and also mental mechanics of how I go through my thought process, how to change your self-talk, uh, basically how to train yourself to be a bad softball player. Yeah. You speak a lot on mindset. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much physical skill. Well, it is physical skills. I, I get that. You're teaching people how to win, kids how to win. But you speak a lot on the mindset. Yeah. Why is the mindset so important to you? Because I think a lot of other coaches and, and athletes out there are, are teaching physical skills a lot. Yeah. Training, drills, great. But you have been like, no, I, I, need, to I need to dive deeper into the mindset. Yeah. Well, I've got a little story, of yeah, course. Yeah, Everyone's of course. got a little story. Yeah. Uh, well, Defense Club started actually all mindset yeah. for the reason of when I was in college, My we talked about my sophomore year, won yeah. a national championship, highest of highs. Yep. My junior year had a lot more expectations on me. We had nine seniors graduate from our national championship team. Junior year, oh. my, I was a preseason All-American, whatever that means. Yeah. Like I was yeah. you know, supposed to be that person. Sure. My junior year, I absolutely tanked. Didn't mm. hit uh, preseason. I mean, all these things happened to me. I had some personal issues. We had some deaths in the family, mm. and it was just like really difficult for me. And I had never felt that before. So, right. um, I fell into actual depression. Went mm. into therapy. Uh, didn't talk to my family. Like, just definitely isolated myself. Was yeah. disconnected from my teammates. My coaches didn't know how to like get to me yeah. and actually like. I don't know, communicate that yeah. they were there, that they're like, yeah. use them as a resource. I was just, it was a kind of a black hole year. Yeah. So after that experience, it took the entire season for me to just go, oh, okay, it's summer, I can reset. Right. But I really felt like I had wasted a year. And as a, a female athlete, yeah. when our pinnacle, like for me, my pinnacle of the sport was playing in college. Yeah. And I felt like I had wasted time and I never, ever, ever wanted anyone after me to do that. Right. So I started writing down my thoughts, not journaling, but more so just writing for those athletes about 
failure. And hey, if you're in this spot, mm-hmm. um, let me tell you that it gets better. Don't like, don't sit in the failure. You have yeah. to use it as a tool. Right. And so we developed me and I had a team that was like helping me develop this brand called Defense Club, where yeah. it wasn't just, um, you know, playing defense. It was how you defend your mind, right? right? Like how you defend yourself against those negative negative thoughts. Because yeah. um, really, you get down to it. I had a very self-defeating mindset, mm. like the entire year. And that's yeah. a long time to yeah. uh, just be picking yourself apart and right. over and over. So Defense Club started as um, mental mechanics for elite athletes. And as I've grown as a person, and as I've seen like my core, like very, very strong audience is softball girls. I'm not trying to like be this, person to every single athlete oh, in, on the planet, right? Yeah. Like, let's just hit yeah. like really, really hard on this softball athlete. And I just thought, you know, you can't train, I can't train these kids without the mental component. Sure. I, I just think that's half the story or not even half the story. Um, it has to be both yeah. all the time. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I've seen you coach um, doing dr- drills and then moving right into the mindset and then back to drills. Um, but is this your way of being able to reach like way more, way more youth athletes because you are one person and you are like, you're not limited by like being in one space, but it takes time to travel. It takes time to go out and do this stuff. So is this your way to help as many kids as possible? It definitely is. Yeah. So internet can reach anybody anywhere. And when I started coaching, you know, I went the route of maybe I want to coach college. So I'm going to go to UC Riverside. I'm going to go to Loyola Marymount and coach then um, I was part of a group called The Package Deal. We started traveling from state to state, and it was really, really powerful for me to see how many, like you don't know until you can see it really, yeah. like how many people, there's infinite people that you can reach, yeah. but you don't have infinite time. Right. So that's when I started like really trying to develop videos, really trying to like put my thoughts online so yeah. that I could reach these people. No, absolutely. And I think it's a great idea. That's the best way to to make yourself not as it's unlimited. You can get unlimited of you inside of this inside of this program where you can't do that in real life. You're a human being. You right. have other responsibilities. But the trick is, which is hard to capture, is how are the how are you getting that actual connection with people? Like how are you really telling your story? in a way that's authentic. So that's, I mean, I think that's a struggle with a lot of people on social media and that's why there's titans in social media because they're really, really good at it. Yeah. And there's people that are really still trying to do it. It's funny and social social media is such a funny place though because, well, for the record, I think you do a great job of telling your story in a real way. I think people are, because it's a new skill, they haven't been doing it for years like you have, but Mm -hmm. it's a new skill. They're just trying to get the courage, the 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 funds or whatever it is to get on camera and then they get on camera and they're kind of just doing like a pair a parody of or like a they're parodying someone else yes of what they think what they think they should be what they think should sound like and it's not until you get kind of through that noise until you can get to the authentic part and i think that's kind of why that why companies like we like we like us we exist because we can kind of get through that faster Mm -hmm. like hey look i know that this is what everyone else is doing but you can kind of ask questions in a way and do things in a certain way and structure things in a way to get the authenticity out of one of them is a podcast we can come on and hear it in a very conversational way but um yeah that's that's super interesting and that's super cool what do you think what would you what would you tell the parent because like you know a lot of these youth athletes aren't going to go on to defense club and be like hey let me sign up with my credit card. I'm 12 years old. Yeah. <laughs> what do you tell the, you know what I mean? Yeah. How do you, like, what do you tell the moms? What do you tell the dads about, about defense club? What are you like? Hey, look, I can't come to Alabama this, this month, but you know, you can get more of me here by doing like, what's the, what's the pitch there? Like, what do you, yeah, I'm definitely talking to the parent a lot <laughs> and it's, yeah, because we know who is paying for mm-hmm. all of mm-hmm. these things. And parents pay a lot, a lot of money. So yeah. one of the things that I say is even to people local to California that can come see me sure. in person is that 
my lessons, honestly, let's just talk dollars and cents. Yeah. It's 50 bucks an hour to come and see me. Yeah. It's $20 a month to right. like get everything, everything mm-hmm. that I teach and you can learn at your own pace. Um, and she can see what she's actually interested in. I think a, a big, um, I guess, need of parents is to know how much their kid wants it how much their kid wants it. And it's not the parent pushing them or driving them somewhere and dropping them off and going, all right, get the most out of this $50, Right? (laughs) you know? yeah. Like parents are really searching for things that their kids are really interested in that they're going to love. Yes. And um, if the kid loves it, they're gonna, it's really easy for them to devote time and effort and Parents will pay anything for that if their kid loves it. Yeah, right? it's like I, when I was young, so like when I was, I would say eight, nine, ten, eight, nine, ten is when I first started baseball, mm-hmm. and I had nothing obviously like that. The the but I wanted more of it all the time. I'd watch whatever game was on TV, and then I'd go out and throw the, my ball against the wall, like practice pitching, hit the wall, come back to me, hit the wall, come back to me. If I had something like this, I probably would have just gravitated over the computer and been like, okay, let's learn something. Oh, tight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this is so cool. Now let me go apply it. Go to my practice. Because, you know, you're only, as a child, two times a week. I mean, if you're doing competitive, I'm not sure. Like a travel ball, is that like, what, three times a week? But Yeah, I mean, I would, I would generally say if you're trying to get better at any skill yeah. and you're just entry level, do it for 10 minutes a day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. and defense is really, really easy to get yeah. good at. It's right. hand eye coordination. It's seeing the ball under your glove. Right. And those are all just little things though, but they're little techniques that you've developed over the years, which will save players years and years of, of trouble. Yeah. Which is why you hire a coach in the first place. And I think the reason that defense defense club is different is I've heard ten years of questions from parents. Yeah. I've heard ten years of like different and seen different things that are really, really common for people to address in their game. So it's not just, okay, here's like super general things that you should be doing. Yeah. Cause that's pretty much what YouTube is for, right? Like, okay, let's, let's Google how to feel a grand ball. How to do that. Yeah. But inside defense club is, Hey, my daughter is struggling with confidence. How would you teach that? Right. Okay. That's not the same thing. (laughs) That's not the same thing. Very, very different. Right. Let me, okay, really granular, specific question about, because I know, I know that you believe that you learn the life lessons in life through sports. That's like, that's one of your like pillars. Can you give us a takeaway? And this could be for any athlete, youth, Mm -hmm. someone playing now, college, whatever. What's one or get, or a couple of tangible takeaways of how you can like take a lesson that you learned on the field into life? Um, like just things the, that you've used. Cause I heard you say you started writing, like writing in college. Like what are some stuff that athletes can do right now that they're like, I need to start doing this like so that I can get better at life. Redefine your measuring stick. Yes. Um, I think one big thing that's really easy for kids to understand is like comparing sport to video games, right? Like, I don't know. A lot of my girls even play video games that are, that train with me, but I heard this said like, Hey, your parent is never going to say, Hey, make sure you go play your video games. You know, uh, one of the coaches that I coached with, he was kind of talking about the different amount, like the amount of time it takes to really get really good at something. Yeah. And in terms of redefining your measuring stick, it's not going to be instant. Sure. It's just not. Yeah. So defense, I think, has a, a different measuring stick than hitting. And depending on who you are, uh, it's going to take a different amount of time. But one, we redefine our measuring stick from a week to a month. Sure. Right? Lengthen that amount of time and understand where you're starting and how you're measuring where right. you're starting. Right. I think there's a... a it's tough for kids to just go and do something because their parents say to do it sure. without goals or without a true like love for what they're doing. Right. So I guess knowing how to set tangible goals yeah. is a really big life skill Yeah. that's critical. Um, and then another thing would be, everybody says love the process. Sure. But in terms of what that means, 
Different for everyone. Different for everyone. Let me ask you this question because when you were going through it and figuring all this out, I know the one thing you said is like, I started writing and you were like, mm-hmm. and that really helps you. Like in terms of goal setting or in, if you were really like a tangible thing that you could do or even that you do now, what's something that people can do? Like on the field, like, oh, I had this thought, I need to write it down later. Or man, I made this mistake, I'm so upset, but like it's the, the process of failing will make me better. Like what are things that, is it like a, you know, does that make sense? Like what are some like techni- te- mental techniques that, that uh, the youth athletes? I think the biggest mental technique that I learned was to get external. I, I talk yeah. to my players a lot about this yeah. because especially I know myself as a quiet kid, I was like beating myself up inside. And if you think about that, even though you're like, man, I need to be better for my team. Yeah. I want to be yeah. this. I want to yep. be that. You're really being selfish. You're really just thinking about all the things about you. Yes. But you're not going, oh, I'm not even making eye contact with my teammates right now. I'm not, uh, and it's not like you need to help them tell them where to go, but right. I'm not even present. Sure. I'm here. Like yeah. that's the only place I am. Say it, and if you think about it, yep. it's like, okay, that is a mental skill in itself to be able to go, okay, shut up. Yeah. Get external. Yeah. Like understand we need to make eye contact. We need to have better body language. We need to actually talk to people so that you're not sucking the energy off the field. And that's, yeah. that's hard to do. The field's yeah. pretty big, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're at shortstop, ball just went under your legs and you're like, oh my God, I suck so bad. Yeah. And you live Whatever. there for three, three innings. You don't have three innings. Yeah. You don't have three minutes. Right. You've got like 60 seconds. Right. To kind of rebound To just back. go. <sighs> All right. I'm good. Are you good? Yeah. <laughs> Even though, like, you know, we're not trying to fake it. Yeah. But it's about a lot of life, I think, is about energy. Like no, people, yeah. People know that you messed up. Yeah. Like, they're empathetic towards that. But More often than not. The only thing that matters is the next one. Yeah. That's literally Yeah, it. I don't think you're, I, what I hear you saying is not faking it, but it's more like you have to get to presence as fast as possible. You have to get back to a competitive mindset. Right. And, in if anything. and if you're living in your head, ruminating over the air you just made, it's like impossible to do that. Mm-hmm. So what I hear, so if I hear you correctly, it's show up to practice with good body language, eyes up, focusing on your teammates, focusing on what's happening, focusing on your coach. Don't live in your head because that's step one to just kind of tanking for that day. Well, yes. Life, I think, is a team sport. Sure. Right? Absolutely. So if you, come into any, if you go into any room, if you're a part of any business, it's not just you living in your head yeah in order to produce anything in order to be a a contributing member of society we have to be a team player and in order to be a team player you have to be external 100 percent. what's one trait you see in your youth athletes that separates the great ones one or or some traits biggest trait is their self-starters yeah self-starters uh they figure out their own routine they stick to it Second one is they make the people around them better. Right. They don't sink or let other people influence their energy. Right. If I had to think of a third one. I mean, the two is pretty damn good. Two is pretty good. Yeah, the two is pretty good. So <laughs> self-starters and they're just uninfluenced by the surroundings. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Um, what is it? Okay, and then like follow-up question, like what does it take to be great at 12, 13, 14? And then in high school, because I think, I think in college people are starting to figure it out, but I think prior to high school, it's really hard to be like, I want to be really good at something. Like, what, is it, what does that take? Um, it takes reps. Yeah. It takes yeah. reps. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the 10,000 hours rule is real. It's... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think kids fall in love with the sport, actually fall in love with it when they're really good at it. Right. So sports, despite what people say, sports are not for everybody. Right. There's other things that are for people. We're not trying to measure everybody based on sport. Yeah. But I think sports is a great tool for people to start out at. Yeah. And then understanding that the things that you love to really be great at those things, they're going to take a lot of time. Absolutely. And the time is going to teach you those lessons. Absolutely. Yeah. I, it's so funny. I was such a terrible like high school athlete. And I remember there was like, I just thought 
when I was younger. I just thought, you know, if I was good, it would be natural. I don't know why I thought that. I like it was so weird, but it was like ingrained in me. If I was if I was going to be great at this, it would be more natural to me. And I remember looking at the that the other players, the kids at the time, kids were um, one guy, one guy, my teammate Alex would show up early, extra ground balls, extra batting practice, and I was like, why is he doing that? Like I don't get it. Does that make? Do you think there's a lot of people like that, like uh, youth athletes like that? Um. Yes and no. I just it was so foreign to me, and it was like later in my life I understood why. Um, but just as I was going and you know, what's f***ed up is like, I do think that the tough thing in, in high school sports is that give God given talent can separate you. Absolutely. And I think that's a really bad, <laughs> like it sucks because it, it throws people off and I know it threw me off because our best player at that time was the biggest like joke Joe kid, like he probably could have been amazing, but he did not have the work ethic, but he was our best player. He was our all American. He hit the most home runs. Like, you know what I mean? I think that, do you see that being like a problem when you work with these kids? Um, I see it being a problem because those kids, uh, they're the ones not learning the lesson. I think the kids that have to work at it and see that, and they might be a little resentful of it, but they still want to play the sport. Yeah they're learning their lesson there. Like yeah. it's almost like that choose your hard thing. Yes. Okay. So like the kid that's looking at the strongest kid and yeah. it's just like, man, f- you, yeah, <laughs> like, seriously. you know, like they're, they're having this internal battle, but also like a life battle of like, why is it so easy for him? But then they, they're choosing the narrative that they're telling themselves. Like I'm going to, they're either choosing a victim mentality or like, Hey, this is my battle. I'm going to fight my battle. I'm going to get better. And then if I still want to play, this is just my path. But like that person that's already good at it, they never learn how to work hard. Right. So, I mean, you're going to, I think that to be is great, you're going to have to work hard regardless. There's just, there's not a lot of people that can, that life is just handed to them. Yeah. Well, early in life, I think so. But I also think that's why you have the Uncle Ricos of the world, you know? living in the coach would have put me in fourth quarter we would have won yeah. state like never gets out of it and i think you're right i think you have to just choose i think later in life i choose i chose to be like okay i'm gonna be great so i'm gonna work a lot harder than anyone else but in 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 hindsight when i look back on it i was just like ah oh, these gifted athletes f- them i'm not gonna work this hard well and honestly baseball probably meant a lot less to him if you really think about True. it you're yeah. just like okay um I'm this guy's really I'm good, good at it. At it. Yeah. This guy's really good at it. He's getting all the girls in high school sure. or whatever. But whatever is important to him, or maybe he hits a failure later in his life, he's not going to know how to deal with that. Exactly. Everybody has things that go wrong in life or, oh or things that don't happen the way that you want to, yeah. that want them to. And yeah. you either learn how to deal with them as a kid, you learn how to deal with them in college, or later in life when you're 40 years old and things are happening. Yeah. That's when people have these crises, crises that yeah. don't, they don't know how to handle. hundred percent. And I do think it stems from just being automatically good. I was really good at a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Like I was good at a lot of things naturally. I'd never worked hard at anything. And it, it, it was only until I was later in life when the, everything in my life was burning down that I had to like figure it out. So I, I think, yeah, I think if I was, if I was, a high school now and I had I would like to think if I had all of these like YouTube and like people that were talking about all the shit, like I think I would have been better but at the time I just had no influence to be like hey no you actually just have to work harder I was like oh got it yeah <laughs> yeah if you never have that messaging you're like okay cool life isn't that hard I don't know what all these people are complaining about <laughs> yeah it, yeah just yeah 100% so what's next for you next what are you well, excited about We've only just started Defense Club. It, it started um, a year ago. I've been building the content for years and years, yeah, yep, yep, but yep. really I've only announced that it's available and it's the thing that I truly believe in in this last year. Yeah, so amazing. Again, redefining your measuring stick. Like this is, I want this to be around for as long as I'm alive, for right, sure. Right. Um, because softball's growing. 100%. There's, there's more kids playing. There's more families that need help. Um, I mean, like I just said, I felt like I just didn't have any, any sort of barometer for what hard work was. So I love it. I think it's exactly what I would have needed as a, it's not limited to softball players. Like 
Baseball can baseball guys go in there? Baseball guys are going in yeah, there. there I, go. Yeah, I just opened up my local lessons to baseball players too, Perfect. which is fun. Everybody needs it. Yeah, it's the same game. Mm -hmm. So, well, there you have it, Morgan Stewart. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks All for having right. me. We'll keep kicking ass. You too.